This is the last time I'm gonna screw around with this, I promise. But I'm like on a mission now. I want, I want to figure out how to keep this thing from throttling itself to death. Anyway, um, <clears throat> back for number the twice try to cool the thing. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah. I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II, recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the Tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. Okay, so if you haven't seen our other videos, um, this is the new Corsair 1, the i500, which has a 14900K, a 4090, and this itty bitty 120mm AIO trying to keep a 14900 cool, which is not gonna work. Now here's the crazy thing. This is based off of an H60X. <laughs> if they had made this like not even an inch wider right here, they would have been able to fit a 240 here. And the crazy thing is if you look at the old Corsair 1, both the both the i300s, I think it was i300. It was like an i200, i300 at that time. Might have been an i500. Can't remember. Doesn't matter. There were much lower TDP um, CPUs in those, and they had a bigger radiator. Like they were nearly a 240. It was like a bespoke design. So one thing I got is I got this right here. This is a Noctua NHL 12 S by 77. It's a low profile cooler. Uh, I'll put a link down below. I did I did get this from Amazon. The problem is I can't directly compare this to say their cooler because they use a different rating. I forget what the letters are, it's N something, something, something. Anyway, they have this whole page about how TDP is not a, a it's design, TDP was designed by like the CPU manufacturers and it doesn't correlate to true wattage comparisons. So I can't directly compare these two in terms of TDP, but I can tell you that this, this low profile cooler with six uh, heat pipes has a 100 Noctuous rating. But the big old giant NHD15 giant cooler is a 167, I think it is. So that shows you that this is clearly more than 100 watts of TDP. All I'm looking for is when we did our test on this was Cinebench throttled hard, like really hard, like down to like, what, 30,000 score, I think 31,000 score, maybe even less. It basically dropped down to like the performance of a 14700K. Like we dropped a ton down to like, I think four gigahertz all core for one, which is losing more than 1.3 gigahertz of all core clock. Even our E cores hit 100C. Now, of course, Cinebench is not a very fair test. That means it, that is just a full load. But when we went in gaming, as soon as the liquid gets nice and saturated, even loading something like Cyberpunk put the CPU in 90s. Because once the liquid was saturated, it's really hard to cool it back down because the whole system has become overloaded with heat. It became so saturated, the fluid couldn't really pick up any more heat. There's only so much capacity that liquid can pick up. So it's kind of ironic that me being the water cooling guy, I'm like, let's try air. So before I get started, here's an EVGA 240 millimeter AIO, which I, if they had just gone like a slight amount longer, they already made it much bigger than the original Corsair 1. Like their other Corsair 1 only went to like right here and the rads were up and down. That they'd gone just a little bit deeper, they could have fit uh, a 240. Because as you can see, it's the end tank that's the problem. And the reason why I can tell you that is because, as you can see, as I close the fan, it impacts even right here, which means I have to like kind of squeeze it over. So that I'm almost wondering if I were to notch this out, would I be able to fit it? I'm really curious about that. But before I do any of that, I have to take this out. The other thing we'll be doing is no longer having these fans controlled by IQ. Well, actually, I take that back. It's not controlled by IQ. I already showed that. Another major flaw with this. It is controlled by whatever internal software is here that we have no control over fan speeds. It uses liquid temp only. Obviously, I'm gonna have to set the fans up to both the CPU fan and these intake fans and the exhaust fans for the 240 AIO on the top. Yes, there's a 240 in the top for the 4090. 
um, because of the fact that there won't be any liquid anymore for it to see for the CPU. So we need it to be able to dynamically control its fans. So we're gonna have to set that up. Fortunately for me, the back does have access to the retention plate. So that means I'm not gonna have to deal with um, trying to like take the whole thing apart just to be able to change this. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this AIO out. Fortunately, it's all contained right here with just this cable. And I might as well go through the effort to take the link cable out because I really don't, ha I have a feeling I'm never gonna be putting this back in. I figured I'll show you guys what the thermal paste looks like. We'll look together because I'm assuming it's very similar to the retail versions. It's like a pre-applied screen printed thermal paste on there. But let's see how the quality of application is. It's actually pretty good. It's actually not that bad at all. I still can't believe we were asking this <laughs> to cool a 14900. Let's go like this. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know what? I'm just gonna leave the cable dangling in there because I don't know. I can't even move it because it's like wedged in there because of the EPS and stuff. So I'm just gonna. I don't want to use any of the IQ stuff anymore for fan control for either the GPU or the CPU because I know I can use fan control to control fans in the, like based on GPU temp as well and CPU temp. So I could I could just add in there a mixed curve of GPU and CPU, and whichever is hotter takes control of the fans and have them all turn up and down together, which is exactly how it should be. Although the 15 millimeters on top should probably always be going near full speed. So here's everything that's in the Noctua box. Here's all the mounting brackets. Here's the cooler itself, which is so much smaller than I thought. I, I almost wonder if I could have fit an even bigger cooler in here. And I'm also feeling like I might change the fan out on this because you have a couple of different... How in the... You have a couple of different options on what the... Yeah, so I, I think I'm gonna have plenty of room, obviously, to have it on top. I think, otherwise the other fans might push right against it. So I'm gonna take a chance that I can still fit these here. Oh yeah, dude, yeah, that's fine. So these are also gonna blow directly on this cooler, which I think is going to help. I'm telling you right now, if, if, this, if this performance is improved, that does not bode well for the cooling decisions made for this chassis. Not for the CPU in it. GPU is fine, actually. <laughs> GPU did surprisingly well for just the 240. Most people that do water-cooled 4090s, like brands that do AIOs on their 4090s, do a 360 because they want the additional like headroom and stuff. Now it's obviously important to note that I'm not using the fan that came with it. I'm using a Be Quiet fan. I'm using different thermal paste. But the differences between our fan and our thermal paste is certainly I mean, it's not gonna make the difference between throttling or not throttling. We are hardcore throttling right now. I'm just looking like what combo of crap does it take to be able to keep this thing from throttling for us? So with that said, I'm gonna have to zip tie this fan to the cooler because this particular fan, even with the new corners that comes with, they're still just as tall and these clips won't work. So I can just do my zip tie trick through there, which will be just fine. This is literally how you would mount a radiator to a car back in the day. <laughs> zip ties through the red. This going through the fan. And it works. It works so well. It's like crooked, but I don't care. Okay, can this. <laughs> They're gonna be like fan on fan crime. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like literally gonna be touching the other fan. Okay, so I have got. Uh, this is... My hand... fans are. My hands are too fat. I almost found the spot. Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> this is so many innuendos in this video. Um, okay, so triple fan splitter coming off of the CPU header. It's now controlling these four fans. I forgot these two are daisy chain, so I thought I needed a quad adapter. I only need a triple adapter. That's coming through, and then this is gonna get plugged into, sure, system fan one right down here. So now the Corsair stuff is completely removed from what, Okay, so the Corsair AIO for the, two, the 240 and the GPU is still there. So I'm just gonna button this back together now. I no longer have to worry about fans ramping up based on liquid temp, which is not, absolutely positively not how I would set it up because liquid temp takes too long to rise. And the sooner we run the fans, the longer we can maintain our clocks. And we'll see now if this has made it. Well, like Michael Scott said, do you want your life to be better, worse, or stay the same? It's gonna be one of those three. 
it's moving so, there's so much air moving through there. Oh my God. I wanna point this out too. I think there were some comments in the previous video. Taking the mesh off did not help the temps at all. I tested that actually when I did the initial video about this thing. I had it sitting over there on our test bench for like an hour going. Then I took off the mesh panel to see if it would cool down at all. Didn't change at all. So the, me the mesh being a fabric is actually pretty breathable. So that's not a problem. Oh yeah, that's what I thought might have happened. So I'm not sure. There is CPU cooler not detected. There is CPU cooler not detected. <laughs> system one is CPU. CPU is top fans and system two is the bottom fan. <laughs> so I have that so set up so stupid. Can I rename it? No, oh, okay, whatever. So here we go. What are we going to spike to? 73, 77, 78. 79, we're at five gigs all core. 83, 82, hear the fans? Do you hear the fans doing fan things? It's a 36,140. I think we were like, we were somewhere between the range of 36,100 to like 36,300, depending. And look how fast it cools back down, 39. Well, we have to do our, I'm gonna let it run for 30 minutes, but realistically we only need like 10, to see, it came, it came, it's back down to its, geez. And this thermal paste is just now gonna start doing its spread. Cause remember it, and if you know, as thermal paste gets hot, then it fills in the gap. So it's only gonna get better actually as it gets heat cycled. So let's just do this one more time. I didn't touch the fan curves or anything. This is the motherboard doing it. I can feel all the heat coming out the back. There's 92, 91. Is 92 really where it's gonna stop? I don't even think we need to do it. Oh, there's 93, 94. It's close, man. We're asking a lot of this low profile cooler. Trust me on that. It's still at 240 watts. It's not reaching. Oh, there's 100C right there. It's not reaching its full 253 watt potential because the cooler is still not good enough. So there we go. It dropped to 84. We're losing watts right at 200 watts. It was 89. 4.6 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.8 on the E cores. E cores should be at about 3940. P cores. Realistically, proper cooling should be sitting around 5352. So we're at 500, 600 to 700 megahertz slower than we want to be. But the temperatures are, are much more in check because here's the thing, we dropped down to 200 watts before and we were still staying at 100 C because as the fluid got so saturated, it couldn't deal with that anymore. But again, this is a much harder test. And remember, we dropped all the way down to like, what, 30,000 before? We're still at... 35,128. That shows you how hard we were throttling before. In fact, Phil could even put it side by side to see what the exact score was, but at 200, yeah, we, we're still running 34,968, so 35,000 range. We were at like 30, 31,000 before, which is 14,700K range. So we're keeping 3.8 E core, 4.6 P core. Again, not the full performance we paid for. Man, I wish, I wish Noctua made this just a little thicker, just a little thicker, but. I mean, that's an improvement. Here's the other improvement. When I stop the test, how fast does the temp come down? Remember last time it sat at like 70 forever, there's 52. Cores are down in the 40s already. All right, Cyberpunk. Remember last time after I ran there and got it nice and saturated, it uh, sat in like the 90C range. So check it out, our GPU is at 48C, 50C. I think we saw like 58 to 60C before, but check this out, our CPU is in the 70s. And last time we did this, it was chilling in the 90s after heat soaking it with the AIO. That's the thing, you can't really heat soak an air cooler as easily, it cools down. Like the time it took for me to stop Cinebench and then start the game, it recovered. Just vapor chambers, they're really, they're really strong. I know as a water cooling enthusiast, this isn't boating well for like me, but this is me really advocating for having properly sized water cooling. 
So a single 120 is just not gonna get it done. As I go deeper in the city too, it has to load more AI, more of the NPCs and stuff. So that's all, that's all P CPU bound stuff. Look, now that I'm farther away from downtown, look at the temps now. Look at the GPU temps. I feel that GPU temps might've even improved slightly more, <laughs> to be honest, because we don't have the hot AIO air making its way into the GPU air. And checking the temps here real quick, you can see it spiked 90 for a moment. Our max P core that hit 90 was course core five. It's obviously our preferred core, but everything else is in the 80s and 76 on that one. And our P cores are in the 70s and 60s. Our E cores are in the 70s and 60s. So we now have fresher air because the heat coming off that, dude, the heat coming out the back is cold. I should have done my temperature test to show the exhaust heat coming out the back before it was really hot because that AIO was getting hot and then that super hot air was going right into the GPU, which was affecting GPU temps. So now our GPU temps came down as well as our CPU temps. All right, there you go. Fun fact, water is wet. Don't quote me on that. I know that triggers people. I'm just, my point is having a cooler that's a little bit better thermally designed than that 120 AIO on a part that can draw 240 plus watts. Corsair offered an air, offer an air cooled version. Get, get someone to help you to, like to design an air cooler for this. That's a downfire. That's thicker. Corsair makes their own AIOs. Make one that's a little narrower. 